Okay, so I have a little cold today. So I've seen these tier list videos and I always wanted to do one here on my second channel, but never really quite knew what I should do it about. Then I was thinking about cheap cameras, which if you've been following my main channel, you'll know that I've used a lot of cheap cameras in the past. And I thought, why don't I make a tier list about some of the best cheap cameras? Now, some of these I've owned or used, some of them I've only seen other people make videos on, but I do have some criteria for cheap cameras. And basically the only two criteria that I have are they need to shoot 4K and they have to be readily available for under a thousand bucks in the used market or brand new. So that's the criteria. I think I have 17 cameras. I probably missed a couple, but these are just the first 17 under $1,000 cameras that I could think of that, you know, can shoot 4K at a decent quality. I'm sure there's a bunch of other things like GoPros and phones. I'm not including anything that doesn't have an interchangeable lens. So let's just start off with, I have the S tier, and then I have max squeeze, which is like you're getting a lot of performance for something that only costs under a thousand bucks. B cam, something that you could pick up as a B cam. Meh, which is just like something that like is good, but I wouldn't buy it. And then dungeon tier is just really bad. And I'm not sure if any of these cameras are necessarily gonna end up in the dungeon tier, but we'll see. Okay, so let's just start it off strong. I'm going to go with the GH4. Now the GH4 I've owned before, I love this camera. Shoots an 8-bit, 10-bit externally if you have an external recorder. And to me, it's either between the meh or the B cam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in B cam for now. It's probably not the first choice for a B cam camera, but I'm gonna put it in the B cam tier. Pretty good camera, especially, I mean, it was the first 4K like mirrorless camera, I believe. And it's still really good. It produces a really nice image, especially if you shoot in 10-bit externally. But I think that, there are other cameras like the next one I'm gonna go to, which is the younger brother and the camera that you're seeing me on, which is the GH5. And that I'm putting in the max squeeze tier because the GH5 is just really, really good. Yeah, that's the only reason why I don't necessarily recommend the GH4 anymore is because the price difference is just so close that like if you have like 400 bucks and you're like, oh, I wanna buy a GH4, it's like, I would almost say like save up another $150 and get the GH5, you'll be a lot happier. All right, this next camera is the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. I'm gonna put this in the B cam tier, maybe above the GH4. So this is the Mark II, so it shoots in 10-bit, which is good. I think this would be a perfect B cam for like a FX30 or an FX3 or something like that. Really good camera. It does overheat and there are some other issues that it has, whereas like the GH4 even doesn't overheat, but you're gonna get a better image out of the ZV-10 Mark II. So that's gonna go in the B cam tier. All right, the next camera, <laughs> I'm gonna put, okay, this is one that I just added kind of like as a joke, but this is the Samsung NX1. I'm gonna put that in the dungeon tier because if it's 2024 and you're even considering buying the NX1, it should be because you found it at a garage sale or something like that. Uh, I definitely would not recommend buying an NX1 by Samsung in 2024. That's going to the dungeon tier. Next one up, let's do the Nikon Z6 or is this the Z7? Pretty sure this is the Z6. This is whichever one Simon Cade used for a while. Uh, pretty sure it's the Z6. It started out not having N-Log, but then they got a firmware update and it has N-Log and 10-bit. So it's a good camera, but again, it's just kind of meh right now. I definitely wouldn't go for it over a lot of the other options here. And it, just so that I'm not playing favorites, I'm gonna put the Olympus EM1 Mark II in the meh tier, but I'm gonna put it actually above the Nikon because it's micro four thirds mount. Much more common mount than the Nikon Z mount. So I'm putting it in the meh tier. I have owned this camera and I loved it, but for most people, the image just doesn't really hold up well enough. It's a great photo camera and it shoots a decent quality video with great autofocus, but it's just not quite at the point where I would put it at a B camera status to where I would use it with one of my other high-end cameras. My buddy Cole over at Alt Cine, he did use this in combination with like a Pocket 4K and you know, they mix pretty well, but I wouldn't choose it for my B cam. Speaking of Pocket 4K, I'm gonna put that in the S tier. That is just one of the nicest looking images for a thousand bucks. And you really can't get much better than like, you know, B-RAW and ProRes coming out of the Pocket 4K. So that's going in the S tier. Oh, hold up. This is the A6400, I believe. Sorry, this is ZV-10 Mark II. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna go 
Now I've had both of these cameras, so I should know which is which. Okay, this is the the Panasonic G7. I'm gonna put that in the meh tier, but I'm gonna put it just above the Z6 because it's a good camera. I think that I've seen this for going around 250 bucks in the used market, so very inexpensive camera. But the reason that I'm putting it in the meh tier is because I do think that the G85 is a much better option. I'm gonna put it at the very tail end on the B cam tier. I have used this as a B cam, so I can say that the G85 still definitely produces a good enough image to mix with cameras like the GH5 and the S5 Mark IIx, but it's just, it only shoots 8-bit. Uh, it's a really nice, crispy 8-bit, but it's just not quite at the level as like a GH5 even. So that's why it's at the tail end of the B cam tier. That's the only reason why I put the G7 in the meh tier is just because it was a great camera when it was released, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend someone buying it, especially when the G85 is so close in price. The Fuji X-T3, I'm gonna put that above, I'm actually gonna put that above the GH4, mostly because I know a lot of people that have like X-H2Ss by Fuji, and they use like older cameras like the X-T3, the X-T4 as their B cams. So that's the main reason why I'm putting it in the B cam tier. It was a flagship camera from Fuji, so it could live in the max squeeze, but I've heard a lot of different things about the Fujifilm X-T3 and like how when you turn it off and turn it back on, you lose a lot of settings and just weird quirks like that to where it's like, I wouldn't necessarily use it as my A cam. So, so that's gonna go in the B cam tier just behind the ZV-E10 Mark II. Uh, ZV-E10 Mark II does have a flip out screen, which the X-T3 doesn't, and it has a little bit more modern features, better autofocus. So that's why it's going there. All right, let's go with the a6400, this is a pretty decent camera. It only shoots an 8-bit though. I'm gonna put it, you know what? I'm gonna put it just behind the EM1 Mark II for the meh section. When this came out, it was great. It doesn't have IBIS. Uh, it will overheat if you shoot for too long. That's why I'm putting it behind the EM1 Mark II. I think that this was the last camera that Sony released that had their old color science. And that's why I'm putting it in the meh tiers because a lot of the newer Sony cameras like the ZV-E10 Mark II have their new color science, which is a lot better. Back when the A6400 was released, it kind of had that weird like greenish skin tone issue. So yeah, everything post A6400 from Sony has been pretty good, but that's why it's gonna live in the meh tier. Some of these I don't even remember. This one, is easy. This is the original Panasonic S5. That's going to go in the max squeeze tier and it's going to go ahead of the GH5. Panasonic S5, great camera. There were some shortcomings like a 30 minute record limit in 4K and a micro HDMI port, which I just still wish that it didn't have because it would be the perfect B cam for the S5 Mark IIx. 30 minute record limit in 4K. So if you're filming something like a podcast, you're gonna have to like start and stop. You can do 1080p without a record limit, which is nice, but there is a record limit on this camera, but it does have a full frame sensor. It's honestly a nicer image, like a more organic image, I think, coming off of the original S5 than the S5 Mark IIx or the S5 Mark II. But yeah, great camera. I think you can get a lot of quality out of that for, I think it's, it's running for around like eight or 900 bucks in the used market, which is pretty crazy. Okay, the next one is the original EOS R. And you know, I know a lot of people liked this, but I'm gonna put it in the dungeon tier just because I'm gonna put it ahead of the NX one though, for sure. It almost could make it into the meh tier, but honestly like, in 4K, that was like one of the criteria for this tier list, that it has to shoot 4K. The original EOS R does shoot 4K, but honestly, it shoots it at like such a big crop and you lose one of the big things that everyone buys a Canon for, which is you lose the dual pixel autofocus, I believe. And it's not 10 bit, it's kind of a soft looking image, even in 1080p. So it's almost in the meh tier for like, I've seen great stuff come out of the EOS R. Obviously we have Matty Apoya, even Danny Gavertz used the EOS R for a little while. It's just not the most robust image. And again, in 2024, if you were gonna buy this, you would have to be like a photographer first who maybe wanted to dabble in video. Next camera that I'm gonna put in the meh tier, almost behind the Z6 is the R50. I think the R50 and M50 can even just be like wrapped up right in this camera. 
essentially the same camera except this shoots in 10 bit, but I think it's only in like uh, HLG mode. I think that the R50 might make a little bit more sense if you're getting into the RF system, whereas the M50 is older, uses the EOS M mount, which is discontinued. The reason why I'm putting it here, not the dungeon tier, is because I think that getting into the RF system can still make a lot of sense for a lot of people. So I personally would never recommend someone to buy the R50 if they're a video shooter primarily. If they're first getting into it, I would, you know, probably steer them towards like a ZV-10 Mark II or something like that. It's cool that Canon made an upgrade to their M50 and got people into the RF mount. So there is an obvious upgrade path. You know, you could go to the R5 Mark II or something like that, like as you grow as a filmmaker, so. All right, we only got three more here. Let's see, this is the the new Fujifilm. I believe this is the X, XM5. I'm gonna put this in the max squeeze. No, should I put it in the max squeeze of the B cam? This is just kind of like one of those things where it's like, it has a lot of features that the S9 does. And the S9 is, you cannot find the S9 still for under a thousand bucks. So it's cool that it, you know, it's competing against the S9, but it, you know, comes in brand new under that thousand dollar price tag. Uh, it does have a smaller sensor and it probably will overheat and it probably doesn't have as good an autofocus as the S9 does, but it does shoot open gate. It's got, I believe a mic and a headphone jack. And so this could almost go ahead of like even the ZV-10 Mark II because it does a lot more things, but it probably won't have the same kind of autofocus. Yeah, I don't know. Should I should I put it in B-cam mode? I don't know. We're kind of getting kind of lonely up here in the S tier. All we got is the Pocket 4K. Yeah, I'll leave it there for now. All right, and next up we have the GH6. And I think this, I think the GH6 does deserve to go in the S tier, mostly because I'm gonna put it behind the Pocket 4K, but the GH6, I think definitely deserves the S tier. It still does so many things for under a thousand bucks. Like internal ProRes, you got B-RAW, you got ProRes RAW, I believe. It's like every codec you can think of, it's not gonna overheat. Like I did hear of like some like sensor issues that it had, but from the people that I know that use it, it hasn't really been an issue. And the stuff that I see come out of the GH6 even now is still really, really impressive. So if you were trying to get into video production and you just needed a camera that could do everything you need, minus low light and autofocus, the GH6 would probably be a pretty good option for you because if you look at all of these different cameras that I have here, there is no camera that can do collectively what the GH6 can do in that body. Image stabilization, ProRes, open gate, great IBIS. It's got all the ports that you need, full size HDMI, tally lights, all the type of stuff that you would need as like a professional video production person. The GH6 can do it. And again, the GH6 can be found for under a thousand bucks on eBay pretty easily. So that's something to consider. Okay, and the last camera that I have is the Sony a7 III, which on paper, it's not a very impressive sounding camera. It is a camera from the same era as the a6400. Uh, it shoots an eight bit only, but it's got a full frame sensor. It's got great autofocus. I'm actually gonna put it in the max squeeze and I'm probably gonna put it in front of the XM5 just because it's a tried and true camera. And the reason why I put it up in the max squeeze is because I am so impressed with some of the footage that I see out of the a7 III, even till this day. There are people like Theo Crawford who uses the a7 III for his videos and his videos still look amazing. You would never be able to tell that his stuff is shot in 8-bit. There's another creator named David Perez on Instagram. He's known as Shot by DP, and he uses an a7 III, and his stuff just looks absolutely amazing. There is something really special about the a7 III image that's coming out of it because people have learned how to work with that older sensor technology and the skin tone issues and work around it. There are a lot of different LUTs that you can use, and you know, people throw Cineprint 16 on the a7 III, and it still looks great. So. That's like one camera that like a lot of people are still using just because the image looks so good, even though it's only eight bit. So that's where I'm gonna land the a7 III. And I think I'm happy with how I stack this up. Obviously the EOS R and NX1 are in the dungeon tier. If it's 2024 and you're a video focused person, I would not consider those. In the meh tier are cameras that are good, but there are better options for just slightly more. And those better options I think are reflected here in the B-cam list, the G85, GH4, X-T3, and ZVE10 Mark II. 
And then again, up here in the max squeeze, I think you get a lot of performance from the price tag with these cameras here. I'd be perfectly happy doing a paid shoot with any of these cameras. Maybe not the XM5, just because I haven't used it as much. That's why I was so close to putting it in the B cam tier. I haven't used Fuji very much in my career, to be honest. And then the S tier, just cameras that you can't go wrong and you're gonna like the image that's coming out of them. Under a thousand bucks, Pocket 4K, the GH6. So yeah, there's my cheap camera tier list. If I missed any that you think should have been included that are under a thousand bucks, definitely leave those in the comment section. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. It was kind of fun. Not something that I usually do, but hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.